In this video, we will take a look at how to issue an IBI and a hot joint request from a slave device using the PGY i3C EXPD. The I3C bus protocol supports a mechanism for targets to join the I3C bus after the bus has already been configured. This mechanism is called hot join. The target must wait for the bus idle condition before sending the hot join request as per I3C specifications. The bus idle condition is defined as a period, during which the bus available status is maintained for a duration of at least T idle, that is, 200 microseconds. Meaning that the SCL and SDA lines are both held high for the T idle period. Condition duration once chosen specifically to help ensure the bus stability during the hot join events. Once the joining target has been assigned, its new dynamic address is fully operational on the I3C bus. On opening the software, we go to the I3C network and see that one main master and one I3C slave have already been configured. The first I3C slave has already been assigned a dynamic address of 8 as shown. The second I3C slave has just been added to the bus and it has not been assigned a dynamic address yet. For the second slave, we are going to issue a dynamic address using hot join. For this, the user has to go to the slave script window, click on the list of preloaded scripts, and load the script for hot join. Next, the user must select the slave ID, because we are sending the hot join request from the second slave device. We will be sending a hot join request on the bus idle condition. After this has been done, the user just has to click on the run button, and you can see that the hot join request has been issued from the slave device immediately, and the slave is assigned a dynamic address of 9 as seen in the plot view, and the same information is visible from the I3C network as well. This is how users can issue a hot join request from the PGY I3C EXPD. Users can also select either the bus idle condition or the bus start condition as necessary to issue a hot join request. The first method was in case if one master and one slave device were already present on I3C bus and a secondary slave was being added using a hot joint request. In the case where a user would like to add the first slave device using a hot join request, the method is different. As seen over here, one main master and one I3C slave are already present on the bus. The current I3C slave has not been assigned a dynamic address as shown. If the user would like to issue a dynamic address to the first slave device using the hot join request, first, the user must go to the master script window and send a sys command. This is to ensure that we set the frequency for the master and to ensure that the packets are sent properly. After the user sends the sys command, we are now ready to go to the slave script window and load the hot join command and click on run. After this, we can see that the hot join request will be sent from the slave device and a dynamic address will be assigned to the slave. Next, we will look at how to issue an IBI request from a slave device using the PGY I3C EXPD. On opening the software and going to the I3C network, we can see that one main master and one I3C slave device are already connected on the bus. To issue an IBI request from the slave device, go to the slave script window and click on the preloaded scripts option and select IBI.txt. This is the default syntax for the script to issue an IBI. Here, users can either choose to trigger the bus idle condition or the bus start condition followed by the mandatory data bytes. After this, the user can just click on run and you can see that the IBI will be issued from the slave device followed by the mandatory data bytes. If the user does not wish to send any mandatory data bytes, the data can be given as zero and the user can click on run and then no data bytes will be sent. By default, the IBI is enabled from the master side. If the user would like to disable the IBI, they can just go to the master script window and click on IBI disable.txt and click on run. After this, if an IBI request is issued from the slave device, it will be NACK ed by the master as shown. Users can choose to send an IBI response. IBI response will send some command from the master side when an IBI is issued from the slave device. For example, we will take a script where we will do a private write and read when an IBI is issued. For that, we will be writing 5 bytes of data using the write command and reading back those 5 bytes of data using the read command. After we type the script in the master script window, 
we can click on run and the script will be executed. Now, when the slave sends an IBI request on the line, the master will send the private write and read commands followed by the IBI request. As we can see over here, in the beginning, we have the IBI issued by the slave, followed by the mandatory data bytes. After that, we have the write command that is issued by the master followed by the read command. Users can also use the IBI abort count feature to abort after a certain number of data bytes. For that, the user must just go to the master script window and send the script as shown. The syntax is script sys extended and the IBI abort count is 2. This will abort the IBI data after 2 bytes. After the script is entered, just click on run and go to the slave script window. Here, we will enter 4 data bytes from the slave when it issues an IBI. Clicking on run, we can see that the master has aborted after 2 bytes of data from the slave. Similarly, the users can enter the about count as required. So this is all for today's video. Thank you.